Simon Morn, co-head of European Equities at MF Global Holdings, joins me now. Hi, Simon. Thanks for joining us this morning. Good morning. Simon, uh, a lot happening, of course, with regards to Spain yesterday. Moody's downgrading at one notch. Uh, and, of course, we had the, the Bank of Japan announcement on capital shortfall for its banks, which surprised many because 15 billion is way short of Moody's estimates of 40, 50 million. So 40, 50 billion. So which side are you on? <laughs> Well, yeah, the Bank of Spain had said that uh, 20 billion was required. They'd now gone away and redone their sums, and it's 15 billion. Uh, and that's based upon a 10% core capital ratio for a number of the savings banks, which, if they were to list 20% on the market by our IPO, their capital requirements would fall to 8%, cutting the deficit to 9 that is a million miles away from the yeah. 38 to 40 that Moody's is talking about. In a normal scenario, 110 to 120 uh, that it's talking about in a stress scenario. So clearly, these differences are not going away. Um, it, it sort of begs the question, Simon, everybody is obviously allowed, and this will probably be clarified next Friday when the parameters of the new stress tests are revealed. Countries and regulators are allowed to identify their own understanding of core tier one. I mean, wouldn't it just be easier if they all just took the same measure, took the same meaning? Oh, well, of course it would. Of course it would. But, um, you know, it would be great if globally we did that. Uh, and, you know, we know the US is still on some kind of really, really antiquated version of Basel and may never get round to adopting Basel III. So hopes for a, a kind of global standard have gone out the window. But what we think is interesting here and what people are perhaps forgetting is that if you're sitting outside the Eurozone, in Sweden, in Switzerland, in the UK, in a relatively small currency with big banks, you are far more vulnerable than you're sitting in the Eurozone where you would manage, manage the, the risks of a Spanish bank, not against the Spanish economy, but that of the whole Eurozone economy. And for that reason, we will expect to see Eurozone banking regulators adopt lower capital requirements than they will in Switzerland, Sweden and the UK. There will be a two-tier regulatory system, and investors have to take that into consideration. So what does that mean, then? How should we be thinking when it comes to investing in, in these bank stocks right now? Well, well first off, we, sh we should perhaps with a pinch of salt some of the late to the table estimates like those of Moody's who didn't call the downturn but are kind of extrapolating it you know late in the day you know one thing to look at in, in Spain is the banks have been reporting much lower inflows into their non-performing loans and the start of recoveries two years after the start of the provisions pickup almost exactly the same timeline as the recovery profile post the 1993 downturn. So I think the evidence really supports more the Bank of Spain's view than Moody's somewhat extrapolated from Ireland view of the world. Secondly, we probably need to look at the Eurozone and say, where are the stronger economies? They're in France, they're in Germany. The banks there are going to have lower capital requirements yeah. than they are in Sweden, the UK and Switzerland. You should be buying banks in those countries. Simon, the message is clear. Thanks for joining us today. Simon Maughan there from MF Global Holdings.